This demonstration is to show how to calculate a chi-square with Excel. We're going to use problem 5 from exam 2 that I recently gave. It's based on some data that's actually real data from an experiment on the lineup type as it affects the lineup choice, whether it's the perpetrator, the bystander, the stranger, or whether the uh, criminal in the mock trial isn't there. And so it's basically a 2 by 4 contingency table. And I copied this table and I put it into Excel. So here we have it in Excel. And this is the observed data for the chi-square. So in order to do a chi-square with Excel, we have to have the expected values. I'm reminding you that you calculate the expected values by row times column divided by grand. So the row totals and the column totals. So basically 22 times 30 divided by 60 gives us 11. And I computed these across for each one and I have them in the same order. Now I wasn't confident that what I was going to get with Excel was exactly what I wanted. So I calculated the cell calculations for chi-square. Remember for each cell, if you're computing chi-square by hand, you take the ex observed value minus the expected value squared divided by the expected value. And I did that across all eight cells and summed them to get this chi-square. I also used the chi-square test function in Excel, and I'll show you how to do that after I go through this whole process, because it's backwards to the way we normally do it. Normally, we would calculate the chi-square value and then figure out its probability. Excel figures out the probability and then does an inverse to figure out what the chi-square should be. So in order to do that, I had to choose uh, the observed values and the expected values and put them in together. So let's go ahead and do it again. So in order to do that, I'm going to choose function. And I'm going to go down to chi-square test. OK. And I have an actual range and an expected range. I selected the actual range, B2 to E3. So I selected the 2 by for contingency range and the expected range first I click in it I selected that too and that's what I've got and it's going to give me the test of independence it says the value for the chi-square distribution for the statistic and the appropriate degrees of freedom but this is really the p-value and so there it is in order to get the actual chi-square result that you need to report you have to so now we need to figure out what the chi-square value is. And remember, we're going to look for chi-square inverse RT. So under the function, chi-square inverse RT returns the inverse of the right tail probability for the chi-square distribution. So we say OK. And the probability is E13. The degrees of freedom we have to calculate that by hand, the number of rows, there are two minus one, really by hand, times the number of columns, there are four minus one, so that's three. Three times one is three, we type in three. Uh, you, can, you should be able to always figure degrees of freedom in your head, on your fingers. And then we get the actual chi-square value. So this is how you do a chi-square with Excel. It will take some setup, and you have to be very careful to get your expected values in correspondence with your observed values. So that's chi-square in Excel. Bye.